of what culture looks like and what Coach Siddell has been able to build here at Wilmington. The whole town rallies behind this team. UNCW in their new black uniforms, the Cougars in the tan, and the Seahawks win the tip. Keith Fogelman, Anthony Franklin, and Kellen Milliner are the officials. Trazarian White, he has been a top 15 scorer in the country, short on his first attempt. Good defense there by Berzovic, staying in front, staying down, forcing the low percentage shot. Charleston had won nine in a row until Thursday, a loss at home to Towson. Here's Berzovic on the back down, Ante Berzovic. They need to go to him early and often. I think that is where they have the most advantage on the offensive end. UNCW started CAA play 0-2. Since then, they've won three in a row. Shot clock down to 10. Jenkins, he can fill it up. And Charleston's elected to switch on all these pick and rolls. So when you come off, you got to be aggressive and ready to make a play. These are the top two offenses in the CAA. Frankie Policelli, he's a transfer from Stony Brook. And talking to Coach Siddle before the game, transition defense was a key point of emphasis. Even after a made basket, Charleston's going to get that ball down the floor. To your point, the Cougars are 28th in the country in tempo. Here's White with 10. White with a beautiful dunk down. McGriff. I thought on that possession, the help came too early. Trevarian White saw the double team come, was able to dump it off to his big man for the flush. Here's Fulton to Berzovic. Great play there by Fulton, keeping the dribble alive, changing pace a little bit, little wraparound pass for the easy deuce. C.J. Fulton, a transfer into Pat Kelsey's program from Lafayette. We'll talk about the transfer pipeline here at Charleston, part of what they've built in three short seasons. Jenkins is off. Berzovic heaves. A little bit off. White with a head of steam. Can't connect. Kick out to Jenkins. And White battles his way for the rebound. He had 31, 11, and 6 on Thursday. Phillips. Great take there by Phillips. The defense is not set off the offensive rebounds, attacking the closeout and getting the folder. Listen to this atmosphere. Up ahead. Great play by Ross, running the floor in transition. Charleston doesn't get back, finds himself alone, and able to get the deuce. Berzovic unafraid to shoot it. This time he puts it on the deck and was off. Policelli, they're letting them play early on. A ton of contact, count it. Way of, good job of Policelli staying with the play. Berzovic takes it in, shorts arm the floater, and Policelli doing a good job of not being a bystander, getting the offensive rebound for the and one finish. You see here, that advanced pass, it's very important. Ross is able to get downhill. And Policelli getting his hands on the 50-50 ball. May have got fouled on the first attempt. Doesn't give up. And then gets the and one. Frankie Policelli. He knows this lead. Intra-conference transfer from Stony Brook to Charleston. And Pat Kelsey was so complimentary of the toughness factor that he's given this team. And he's starting to play well. Last two games, 14 points per game, six rebounds. Only shot three of 11 in this last game, but I like him being aggressive. Kick out. Oh, three of these for Ross. 
Well, now with Scott in the game, they're going to hard hedge. Great job by the guards keeping the ball alive. Now we got a steal. And the Seahawks have numbers. McGriff. Catch your breath, Trey Dempse. How about this atmosphere? Fans are rocking. We see here, drive and kick. Ross doing the rest. Love what you say about that pick and roll defense for the Cougars as McGriff is at the line. Out of our timeout, it was the point of emphasis that Pat Kelsey made in his shoot around this morning because Trey on Thursday, Towson went 10 for 19 from three. Christian May had 20, and they shot the Cougars at TD. And a lot of times, three point percentage is indicative to your ball screen coverage because if you're not on the same page in a collective unit when you're in a hard hedge a lot of your rotations are off and that gives up open opportunities from the three-point line some pressure from the Seahawks when you're uh, on the road in this atmosphere how do you stay focused you just got to stay true to who you are you want to execute in the half court especially here's Rogers Straight up defense by Donovan Newby who comes in off the bench. White off to Newby. He's been struggling with that shot. Takeo Siddle thought maybe bringing him in as a reserve today could help. Fresh 20. White off the fake. Trezarian White is off. And the bigs of Charleston have done a really good job early on staying down on White, making him a jump shooter. Policelli. How about that? We talked about it in the open. If you go underneath Charleston, any handoffs, ball screens, they're going to make you pay. Frankie Policelli has been in the high 30s throughout his career in three-point percentage. They believe he can get back there. As here's Newby, he's fouled on the take. What's this game mean in the CAA? Well, Drexel's that Spikers team, they're off to their best start in conference play since the mid-90s when Malik Rose was leading them. But these two expect to be in the conference regular season title hunt. Yeah, and you just talk about the conference as a whole. You look at their record against, you know, other conferences in the non-con play, undefeated against the Missouri Valley, you know, UNC Wilmington with that big win against Kentucky. I mean, this is high-level basketball. On that same day that UNCW beat Kentucky, Drexel beat Villanova. Several marquee wins. And a little bit off, and the rebound to Burnham and Charleston. Here's Bryce Butler, a Division II transfer. The kick and the three. It's Crawford. Good job by Crawford getting his seat fed. One of the things about Wilmington, sometimes they overhelp. They'll send three guys to the ball, so there's going to be some opportunities for Charleston's role players to knock down open looks. You talk about those role players as they get a stop. That's part of the DNA of this program. They are ninth in the country in bench points. And Coach Kelsey gives his guys a ton of confidence. There's really not a bad shot. Burn him off, and here comes Raton Mays. I think three-point shooting is going to be big for Wilmington. Early on, Charleston has given them some opportunities at the three-point line, catch and shoot. You've got to be confident, step down, and knock it down. They've gone from an offense that averaged around 68 points per game last year to 81 this year. So there's three on the shot clock for Newby. Newby. Another offensive rebound. Hodge. And Hodge has made one three-pointer in each of the last two games. So he's the guy to watch as his confidence starts to build. They average nine triples per game. They've got a pair and we're even. Butler. And Burnham was over the back. Great job by Raton Mays, walling up 
As we see here, the offensive rebound, Hodge getting his feet set, confidently knocking it down, but we really like the minutes that Tom Mays would give. He's pushing the tempo, he's getting guys involved, and doing a good job on that last possession, walling up, not allowing the Butler to get into the paint when he's playing booty ball. Got a lot of guys that play booty ball for Charleston. <laughs> Fun start to this one. These teams met three times last year. Charleston won all three meetings. It's a little bit of revenge at stake as well for the Seahawks. Ten on the shot clock. Now down to six. It's Phillips. Shaquem Phillips. Tapped out and to the Cougars. Well, because Charleston is switching on a lot of these pick and rolls, what it's doing is it's making Wilmington a one-on-one -on -one isolation team. And Phillips getting downhill, able to get past the defender, but the help side is there to force a low percentage voter. On the back down, Burnham. Ben Burnham, he's the guy who steadies the ship, says Pat Kelsey. Yeah, if he gets the ball down low against Ross, who's only 6'7", probably giving up about 40 pounds, he's able to get to that left shoulder quick and get the high percentage look. A foul on Crawford, and we've got a timeout. We see Burnham again, get right to that position, little ball fake. Charleston got it rolling early. The overtime went into overtime. Championship game. Yeah, to your point, a magical season, 31 and four. And it's a collective of guys that, you know, Charleston hasn't had over the last two seasons one guy that averages 15-plus games. They have multiple guys that can get it done on the offensive end. John Fanta, Trey Demps with you from Wilmington. It'll go back to the Cougars. 31 wins last year, the most for this program in their Division I era. And over the last month, they've looked like that type of team, again, despite losing five different players from last year that started at one time or another. Berzovic is one of the two key returners. He's off. Great defense there by McGriff. Timing up, a little shimmy move by Berzovic and able to get the block. Here's Jenkins. Transferred from New Mexico. KJ Jenkins. It's been fun watching him over the last few games, how aggressive he's been. He's made eight threes, but doing a good job there, putting the ball on the floor, taking his time, playing off of two feet, and getting the midi. Double figures in nine of his last ten games. That's a travel. I think that's been the difference over these last three games with Wilmington. As we see here, Jenkins doing a good job playing off of two feet. He's a little bit of a head fake to create the space. But on the defensive end, they have been connected. You know, on a lot of switches, whether it's ball screen defense, whether it's transition defense, all five guys have been on the same page. And I think that's been the difference in why they've been able to get on this three-game win streak. Trey, it's what Sikhail Siddle told us. He said, look, we're better offensively, but I'm still a defensive guy. We still have to guard because Mr. White once they guard, he can score. Just a quick move before the double team can come. No baseline help, and able to get the finish. Another contested shot as Fulton is off. White. Trey Zarian White is long this time. And here comes London, who's just checked in. Khalil London, tap back for Bercevich. That's a good take there by London because the help side has to come over because he's able to get downhill into the painted area. That allowed Bercevich to get the tip in. Does this not feel like a heavyweight showdown? Oh, for sure. And it's been fun to watch as we see White struggling a little bit early on getting downhill. But it almost seems like Wilmington, maybe because they're at home, is dictated the tempo and they feel comfortable playing at that faster tempo because they have experienced guards. We see it again. And Charleston early on has done a really good job of staying vertical and not allowing him to get all the way where he can shoot uncontested layups, forcing him to shoot floaters, mid range shots.
You see the switch again. They're just switching back and forth. And that works perfectly. A turnover. And I think if you're white, when you get that switch, you got to back it up a little bit to get your speed up. Because if you get the switch within the 15-foot range, it's harder for you to get downhill, and it's actually easier for Charlton's bigs to stay in front of you. It's interesting. A guy averaging over 20 per game. It's here's Berzovic. Ante Berzovic has helped set the tone for the Cougars. And he's popping on a lot of these down, or pick and roll actions. Doing a good job there. Getting downhill. Help side's not there. Able to get the deuce. Trey that he scores that much white. And he's only hit 14 threes on the season. You notice that. Yeah, and they're undefeated when he hits a three. So <laughs> we'll see if that streak continues. And their losses, he's 0-14 from the three-point line. His shooting... If he's able to knock down perimeter shots, just gives a different dynamic for the Charleston team. And that says to you, as you were talking with me about this this morning, potential NBA. If that comes along, that jumper. Yeah, absolutely. Down to five. White floating, and again, he was contested. That's a good job there, forcing the ball to the baseline. Rain Smith is off. But Pat Kelsey will live with those shots. Newby, a lot of contact, and there's the foul call. It came at the last moment. And there's some disbelief from Butler. A good play there. Kind of got mixed up with the switching. Newby doing a good job getting downhill. And that was a great call by the official because he was the one that had the angle to see the hand contact. It was actually good defense from a body to body standpoint because the defender was vertical, but there's a little bit of a hand check which drew the foul. Off the fake. Newby. Love that newbie has continued to stay aggressive. Last two games, only shooting 20% from the field, not letting that affect him. Here come the Seahawks again. This place is ready to burst. Hodge. Offensive rebound by McGriff. Phillips is short. And a foul. It's on McGriff, and we've got a timeout. We see Newby coming off the baseline out of bounds play, a little fake, and knocking down the three ball. I work hard, and I want my money to work hard, too. So I use my Freedom Unlimited card. Earning on my favorite soup. Ah, got it. A Charleston uniform. Talk to Coach Kelsey before the game. Bolicelli is just a culture guy. Someone that's a veteran, understands his role. But what I love most is not afraid to get him up. Averages three, or excuse me, six three-point field goal attempts per game. Led this league in rebounds last year. He was looking for the basketball there. That's deflected. And it will stay with the Cougars. See it again here. Good slip by Policelli. Looked like they got away with the hold White did. And I don't know if anybody no. tipped that one. Takeo Siddle was pleading his case. It looked like he had one. Policelli. Short. Here's Hodge. Takeo Siddle loves his talent. He's a little bit off this time, and you have liked the way Charleston's defended. Yeah, I like the switching defense, and there's just a commitment on that end to guard the basketball. It's all about pride. Do you want to defend? Charleston has early on. 
Crawford. You know, this is a small note, but when I watched Crawford this morning at shoot around, I don't think he missed a three. Every shot that he took went in. And just the preparation level, you know that young man has been in the gym, ready for his opportunity, knocking down two early threes here. Part of one of the best mid-major recruiting classes in the country. Just a freshman. Shot clock down to 10. Phillips. Another one-on-one -on -one scenario, as you've alluded to. And that's what Charleston wants, mid-range, contested jump shots. They've been able to get a little bit free, but that's what the defense gives you, so you got to be able to knock those down. They go under, and again, Crawford makes them pay. He's three for three from three. Timeout, UNCW. His last three games, his only shot, three for 11, 10 minutes per game, but you would never know it. He comes off of here, being able to take a pay, going underneath the screen, and then another three ball. Crawford has it going early. Surge behind Jordan Crawford. He's averaged just over 10 minutes per game. Yeah, I mean, he's a capable scorer, though. There was a point in December where he had four straight 10-plus games, including 13 points against FAU. He's a guy that is... As talented as an underclassman you'll find in this conference, showing it here early this afternoon. UNCW won for their last eight in need of a bucket. Phillips is long, but a foul on the Cougars. I made this point before, but... They've gotten a lot of those opportunities. The Phillips kind of got downhill off the closeout, where they've been able to get around eight to ten feet for a floater or mid-range shot. Those are the ones you got to knock down. Pat Kelsey visibly upset. Jenkins. And as he knocks down three balls, that's going to open up everything for the Seahawks with penetration, especially for White, because you have to think twice about helping off of him. A foul on Phillips. Say so we're trying the alley-oop to Scott. You see here, Fulton cheats that screen, tries to go over the top of it. Jenkins making the great read of flaring out to the corner and knocking down the three ball. James Scott at the line for Charleston. Well, K.J. Jenkins enters today 8 for 14 from 3 in his last two as James Scott off on his first attempt, but he's another impact newcomer of the fold for the Cougars. As an efficient player, you will find shooting 82% from the field, rookie of the week twice in the CAA in December. You can see the talent oozing from him. And Trey, you can see the depth that they have. Part of their DNA playing out right here. The fact that these freshmen come in off the bench and step up. Yeah, it's just the confidence that Coach Kelsey gives everybody. There's really no bad shot that you can take as long as it's within, within rhythm. Jenkins is long. Here's Fulton. A native of Ireland, part of the Ireland national team, Fulton. And that's big because pretty much all ball screens of Fulton, they're going underneath. Even if it's set in the mid-range area, Fulton doing a good job of being decisive and knocking it down. He only averages four points per game. So Charleston's complimentary players are delivering today as Jenkins leads the way for the Seahawks with nine. And it was the change of pace off of that ball screen that made Scott go back to his defender and he was able to get the floater. Barnum's off and here come the Seahawks. Phillips got a step. Straight up defense by Burnham. And that was a good play by both players in that position. Phillips, as we take a look at it again, good kick out pass. Going off of two feet, and then Burnham doing a good job of staying vertical, not going into the offensive player. That's clean defense. Just a good play by both players. But ultimately, Burnham came out on top. Keith Fogelman, Anthony Franklin, Kellen Milner, your officials. 
and this does not feel like your mid-January game. These two coaches have been plenty active in conversation in this first half. It feels like March, but the <laughs> weather out here wouldn't say so. No. You... Burzovic, who just came back in, and a foul. It's on Harvey. And we've got a timeout. A four-point game. You're watching College Basketball on CBS Sports Network, presented by Fresh Bats. That Charleston defense has held UNCW to 11 of 32 from the floor. And Trezarian White, only two points on one of seven. How about that defense? And how about the fact that he has zero free throw attempts? And that's just taking pride on the defensive ends, right? He's a guy that averages almost nine free throw attempts to hold him to one of seven to not allow him to get to the foul line to get himself going has been a major factor in this game. He drew 13 fouls against Elon on Thursday night. It's a guy that shot 20 free throws in the game earlier in the year. <laughs> None tonight. Here he is. And there's a foul. That is more of his game. And that was the thing that Coach Kelsey mentioned. He just has a gift of drawing fouls and being able to sell it in a way that's not flopping, right? Because there's there's sometimes where guys flop, but he's able to sell contact in a way that triggers the ref to call it. It is a one and one for White. As that foul put Charleston in the penalty. UNCW still with two to give. White on the season, 70% at the line. Again, folks, he's coming off a 31-point performance straight. He has scored at least 27 in four of the last seven games. Another thing, too, there are two games against Power 5 opponents. He averaged 28 points per game. To me, he's a guy that should be on draft boards that NBA scouts should keep their eye on. Persovich back toward a fold and pretty pass from the big man. And that's what's called delay action, where you play through your center, you get weak side movement on both ends. Great job of slipping the screen and getting the deuce for Folden. Jenkins to the corner. Newby is short. And there's Persovich again. His activity in this first half. Butler to Berzovich. Berzovich is a freight train. Well, that's the challenge, right? When Butler posts up and you have Berzovich, who's a center playing the perimeter, you send the double team, and now all of a sudden you have a 6'10 guy with a full head of steam coming at you. Double figures now in seven of his last eight games. He leads everybody with 11. White. Offensive rebound. You talked about that. Their seventh offensive board to the corner, Newby. Some contact as he threw that behind the bucket, and it's back to the Cougars. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Brent Stover, Chris Walker, John Rothstein, and Seth Davis will get you caught up on all the highlights from around college basketball. It's coming up on AT&T at the half. What a day in college hoops. Plenty of drama earlier on CBS. Boise State taking down San Diego State in the ever-dramatic Mountain West. Deep three for Smith. And out of bounds off the Cougars. And Smith is a guy they need to get going as well. Only shot 5 of 20 in his last few games from the three-point line. They need his threes, especially on the road. This UNCW team's led the CAA in scoring this year. What do they need to do different offensively? Well, I think they're getting good looks. And it's hard because Charleston switches up how they play pick and roll defense. Sometimes they're in flat, sometimes they're in hard hedge. So you got to be assertive and aggressive with whatever defense they're playing. Just their second turnover. That's a trap. And to your point again, so sometimes there's, as we see this highlight again, doing a good job of forcing him into the dead zone underneath the basket. But to your point, 
you know, sometimes you had this skip side, or excuse me, the weak side skip pass where you're able to attack closeout. Sometimes they're in a flat drop coverage where the ball handler is able to create. So you got to just read the defense and take what the gives, defense gives you. Phillips to the corner. There's White. And I don't like that defense from Butler. He helps same side corner. Even though White has struggled, you don't want to give him that easy of a look. Just his 15th three of the year. They're unbeaten when he hits one. Here's a turnover. No, it's taken back. Dump down to Berzovic. Nice delivery from Rogers. Well, they gave thought to going two for one, but then Takeo Siddle pull everybody back as there's about a 16 second difference between shot and game. Shot clock at eight. Phillips. Fader. Another offensive rebound. They get a fresh 20. Farrar sticks it back. A great job by Farrar. Not just being a bystander. That shot goes up. He crashes the glass immediately and is able to get the floater. Pat Kelsey will use that. Use it or lose a timeout. And the Cougars with 9.3. So you see it here. Farrar used this button. Point three seconds left in the first half. Cougars with the ball. Trazarian White, folks, is a top 15 scorer in America. In this first half, one to forget. Yeah, you got to give Charleston a ton of credit. They have kind of forced him to take lower percentage shots in the mid-range. Down to six for Rodgers. It's at four. Rodgers now with three. Rodgers heaves, and that'll do it for the opening 20 minutes. Charleston, the reigning CAA champs, they swept UNCW last year. The Cougar. Some healthy competition amongst these two teams, but there's just nothing but respect of the program that these two coaches have built. You're right. It was it was interesting this morning. You don't hear this now in 2024 as often, but they both said, look, yeah, we don't like each other. <laughs> it's because we respect the heck out of each other, though. And that, that's just, you know, that's old school basketball. And I feel like we need more of that sometimes. You know, it's a lot of buddy-buddy in today's basketball. This is a rivalry. As Berzovic is off. McGriff with the defense. Just 175 miles separate the two schools. Shot clock down to eight. Jenkins is off. But I like that play from McGriff. You get the ball in the post. You don't feel comfortable playing one-on-one. -on -one. The little dribble-up move to Jenkins just wasn't able to knock it down. Here's Smith. He was quiet in the first half. White got his hand on it. Fulton somehow grabs it. Smith off the fake. Rain Smith. He had 30 plus against St. Joe's this year. There's certain guys where their threes mean more than three points. Because of how much they depend on his three point shooting, being able to space the floor, it is important for him to get going in the second half. First points of the game for the junior from Australia. White. And I like that. Just straight off the catch, a little bit of a jab step, get downhill, left hand, Burnham. Not doing a great job of cutting them off. White making them pay. That was in your keys. Get to the basket. Barnum is off. Takeo Siddle said, we can't settle, gentlemen. To beat the reigning CAA champs, we've got to attack them. Deep three for Jenkins. That's just the challenge that White presents for your defense. Because he's so good in the low block area, you have to bring help. Jenkins doing a good job being ready and knocking it down. He's shooting 60% from three in his last three games. Smith leaks out. It stays with the Cougars. How about that play from Ross? Getting it on the floor. So we see here the Jenkins three from NBA range. But the intensity level just continues to rise. And I've really been impressed with Noah Ross's play. He's not going to get any plays called for him. 
He's a complimentary guy. He's a glue guy that does the extra things, and he's having to guard a veteran in Burnham. Amard Harvey checks in off the bench for McGriff. Takeo Siddle had a message to his starting big man. Here's Berzovic. Ante Berzovic. What Berzovic is doing in those pick and rolls, he's doing what's called a short roll, where he's catching the ball in the free throw line area, and then he's able to attack downhill. Here's White. That was stuffed. Ben Burnham had straight up defense on him. Now Burnham. Rebound by Phillips. And a quick foul on Berzovic. He didn't want them to take off and run. It's a veteran heavy play there. What does this game mean? Well, Charleston and UNCW are trying to keep up with unbeaten Drexel at 7-0 after a win over Delaware earlier today. The Cougars in that log jam there with Towson, North Carolina A&T. Campbell is new to the CAA this season. And Bill Cohen, his Northeastern Huskies, you can never count them out. Bill, one win shy of the all-time CAA wins record. Phillips and one. And that was a great job there by Harvey setting a flat ball screen. So then Phillips can choose which side he attacks. As we see it again, big man is over on the left side. He attacks to the right. Scott is not able to catch up. A strong take there by the veteran guard. Trey, we were at shoot-around this morning. This kid never stopped smiling. And that type of energy is infectious, right? That carries over to the rest of your guys. He's a five-year guy at UNCW. Tough lay-in for Rodgers. And that's what Rodgers did at the end of that Towson game. He just got downhill. I'd like to see more of that. Maybe not set a play, just let him attack. And then if he doesn't have anything, you can spray it out for threes. A national champion at the D2 level last year as White is fouled. And that play kind of looked like DeMar DeRozan as we see Rodgers getting downhill, no help side there. But that, that play by White, it's a little thing, but he watches film where you stick the ball out a little bit because the defender's hand is right there and force the foul. I think that's what Kelsey was talking about before the game with his knack to draw fouls. Jordan Crawford checks back in. Frankie Policelli with his third foul. But Crawford came in for him in the first half and had nine points. Here's Jenkins again. KJ Jenkins is heating up. Had five threes in his last game against Eli. Probably going to reach that again here today. Crawford got up the floor in four seconds to take that shot. Crawford, just a freshman. And a foul on the take. That won't count. And that's what opens up when you're able to knock down perimeter shots. If you see the baseline out of bounds play, Smith not able to get through the double stagger screen. And Jenkins getting his feet set and knocks down the tray ball. K.J. Jenkins now 11 for 20 in his last three games from downtown. Here's the freshman Crawford. How much has he impressed you? Very much. And really is just to begin this, this second half because I thought in the first half he's trying to fill the game out. You know, this is probably his first time playing in this type of environment. We see it again, getting downhill, playing off at two feet, getting his defender in the air. But as a guy that just has a knack to get into the foul line, their last game had 14 free throw attempts. When you think about this Charleston program, this is a program that has been unafraid to bring in the high-level Division II transfers, and why not? Kobe Rogers and Bryce Butler. Rogers for Nova Southeastern, Butler for West Liberty last year on CBS in the Division II National Championship game. Rogers and Nova Southeastern were on the winning side, but now they're wearing the same uniform. And both, I mean, in college basketball as a whole, you want to get winners. Guys, whether it's at the D2 level, the junior college level, that have won at the highest level. The Cougars 
They have had a transformation as a program. Now they're looking for a signature road win today. Cannot wait for that. Chiefs Bills showdown. Be plenty of fun. John Fanta, Trey Demps with you. Let's take a look at college basketball storylines. Plenty of activity. How about a triple overtime classic in New Jersey earlier today? Creighton outlasting Seton Hall. Even though Seton Hall with the loss today, I love what Coach Holloway is continuing to build with Seton Hall. They have guys now that can put the ball in the hole to go along with their toughness and grit. And Mr. Edie, ho-hum, third straight 30-10 game. Uh, just another day at the <laughs> office for Zach Edie. You know, just a double-double machine, unstoppable, and continues to get better on the defensive end. West Virginia shocking Kansas. You just don't know in this sport. Mountaineers 7-11 and 11 on the year and take down the top three team. Jenkins is off this time. Crawford. Crawford. Jordan Crawford is only a freshman. He's got a dozen. How about that from the freshman coming up big in this hostile environment, quieting the crowd. His finest hour of his career thus far. Shot clock down to 10. And again, that Charleston defense. It's at six for White. Trey Zarian White. And it's the deceleration as he gets closer to the balance, or excuse me, to the basket to give himself balance. Great take there by White. Butler with the reverse. White comes right back, and Trey right off makes it's five seconds and somebody's launching a shot it's the best brand of basketball as we see the rip who a little bit of a look off right there by butler with a good job on the other end for white getting downhill and just his understanding of angles knowing that when the defender opens up their feet just a little bit that he can attack that angle create contact and go up vertically Trazarian White now with 21 straight games with 10 or more points as Berzovich and Burnham check back in for the Cougars. And it feels like Trey Demps that there's been a change, an adjustment from White in this second half. He is in attack mode right now. Well, I think it's where he's attacking. He's starting to attack more from the top of the key area where he has more space to operate. Berzovich has been plenty active. Ante Berzovic. His ability to operate in that short roll situation and his teammates being able to make that pocket pass to find him and get in the floater on that possession. 17 for Berzovic. Newby just took his man all the way to the bucket and he'll go to the free throw line. Do you see that last place again? I mean, there's not a lot of guys that can make that shot at that size and Newby doing a good job of getting downhill Using the change of pace using escape dribble to open himself up out of that ball screen action and draw the foul Donovan Newby senior from Chicago Heights, Illinois and As you look at this student section folks, they've been waiting all day. They started a tailgate university has a full-on pregame party here in Wilmington I mean, there's power five teams that don't have that I no. mean, it's incredible ball awarded to Charleston and the 5200 here are letting the officiating crew know what they think It is an amazing scene. The swim team is behind the Charleston bench because, of course, <laughs> Fulton, not this time. Kind of wish the swim team was underneath the Seahawks basket when they <laughs> shot free throws. <laughs> White. And the rebound to Rogers. And Folden takes a bump 
from Newby. As Fulton continues to play in that pick and roll, they're going to go under until he can prove that he can knock down that three-point shot. That possession did a good job of just attacking downhill. Sometimes when defenders go underneath, it's not always the jump shot. You can get downhill if your defender gets caught up on the screen. As Raton Mays checks back in for UNCW. Youngstown State transfer now guarding Fulton on the ball. Two transfers right now in lead guard positions. Ante Berzovic on an island. Berzovic on the back down. Ante Berzovic owns that island. 19 points. That was a good job of Harvey warring over the screen, making Berzovic catch the ball out, but just too good from the big man. Nolan Hodge. Timeout UNCW. Hodge continues to step up, beam this team. They take those 31 threes per game. That is third, third in all of college basketball. And how about this? Rain Smith took 20 threes in one game, <laughs> shot nine of 20. Now that I think about it, I would have loved to play for Coach Kelsey. But they're called fast advantage shots. That if Pat Kelsey sees an opening, he doesn't care if it's three seconds into a shot clock. If it's open, he likes it. Hodge off to White. Tracerian White! Now we have the crowd into it. You send two to Berovich. He turns it over. You're able out to get in transition. And you're hanging on rims. Hodge is swarming the ball. Berzovic with a silencer. And he saw the guard start to come over to double team. I think that is a great point of attack. Even every time he puts the ball on the ground, whether it's from the perimeter or the low block, send a double team because he's eating right now. Look, to Kale Siddle, UNCW head coach told us we're a guards team. Our bigs hang in, but right now, Charleston's attacking that advantage. Shot clock down to eight. Phillips. Stripped, White can't keep it in, and the Cougars get another stop. And at any chance that Charleston gets going, UNC, the UNCW gets going, Charleston has kept them at bay, but White trying to ignite these Seahawks. I wear this shirt on game day, tailgates, homecoming. Well, first of all, it's softer than any other hoodie that I own. In transition and attacking, I think that's where you can beat them because Charleston sends a lot of people to the offensive glass. Defensive principles of these two teams. And you could just tell these teams, Trey Demps, know each other well. Yeah, this is going to come down to execution. This game is going to slow down. So tendencies and knowing those tendencies are going to be important. Rodgers, he's got half a dozen. Here's Phillips, the veteran guard in his fifth year with this program. He didn't enter the transfer portal. He stayed here for half a decade. Jenkins with the timer down to seven. Into the hands of White, one of the best scorers in America. White gliding, hitting. And that's what I'm talking about. White attacking between the elbows. The help is not able to come. There's more space for him to operate with a tough finish. 16 for White. Spin move. Rogers. Goodbye. McGriff denied the reservation. But I do like Rodgers being aggressive on the attack mode. He just has to understand when the help side is coming. You see here, there's two guys with him. Try to spray that thing out for threes. Rain Smith. Rebound by Hodge. Hodge, White, McGriff, Phillips, and Jenkins on the floor for the Seahawks. White is starting to heat up. Can't get it to go. Barnum to Smith. Skip pass to the corner. 
Just off on the triple, but offensive rebound. Back out to Rain Smith. It's short. Another battle for it. Smith tries again. And was that basket interference? It fell in, though, for Rain Smith. Short-term memory. That's the best way to describe Rain Smith. He doesn't care if he missed three or four in a row. The next one is going up. I love watching a player like that. A never-changing green light for the Cougars. Jenkins will go to the line for three. And the thing about Jenkins is that he never stays still. Even when other guys are operating, whether it's off-ball, ball screen, he's able to find the opening as we look at this replay to see if it was basket interference. Ooh. Wow. As he hit the rim. <laughs> wow. <laughs> about as close as you can get Trey James Scott just did enough to allow that to count so here's Jenkins what a day he's had he's just hunting shots I mean you can just tell the look in his eye there's just a confidence about him and as I mentioned before he does a good job of moving without the basketball and playing off of other guys and being able to find the little creases and openings where his teammates can find them for open looks from the three-point line. His role that much more important with UNCW still missing Malik Harden-Hayes, who's out with a lower body injury for a second straight game. Rodgers turned it over. Here come the Seahawks. Phillips. Another foul, and he'll go in the line for a pick. And we see right away, Berovich going to the scores monitor to come into the game, but really good take there by Phillips getting downhill in transition. That's the fourth foul on James Scott. So Pat Kelsey now has to go back to Berzovich. And the officials whistle things before the shot because Pat Kelsey does not think that Phyllis was going up for a shot. That stoppage didn't rattle Phillips. The thing about Phillips, as we see here again, Kelsey questioning that call whether it's a shooting foul but to the point Phillips only has 18 three-point field goal attempts but even though he's not a shooter he's still able to use his size and body to get downhill they're on their feet at Trask Berzovich time and again a foul is called On Harvey. To see it again. And Merzovich has to finish that one. I mean, that's two feet away from the basket. Nice spin move. The double team doesn't come in enough time. Definitely got fortunate there. Merzovich, a 61% free throw shooter. What a performance he has had in this game. Give him his season high. 22 points, and Trey's 10 for 14 from the field. And watching film on him, you know, it to me it was very clear that he could be more aggressive on a game-to-game -game basis. And he has been over the last few games averaging 13 field goal attempts. I think that's going to be their key for their success moving forward in CAA play. Just a sophomore by classification from Croatia. Jenkins got a step. Good night. 
shooting it at a high clip. Jenkins actually shoots the ball better off the dribble, shoots 47% off the dribble, doing a good job there, setting his feet and knocking it down. Season high 20 for Jenkins. All the stars are shining. Berzovic lost the ball. We see it again, doing a good job coming off, even though Smith has the late contest, doesn't phase the red hot Jenkins. We've had eight ties, we've had eight lead changes. It has lived up to its rivalry billing and its title game rematch billing. And a basket here, and the roof that's on Trask Coliseum will be unhinged. Phillips. What they're starting to do now, John, is they're starting to run what's called a Spanish pick and roll, where you have the back screen action, and you have to stay home with Jenkins as he sets that back screen. Policelli. Offensive rebound by Fulton. Here's Smith. He's short. Another battle. It'll stay with the Cougars. How intense is this? Takeo Siddle is asking for a review. Coach, there's eight minutes on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> and intensities are high. I mean, John, I don't think these coaches are. It's all about winning of at course. this point. <laughs> Any advantage they can get as we see it again. Yeah. And now the officials are going to stop things here to wipe up the floor because you had bodies going to the hardwood. 8 0 2 to play. And I'll say this, John. You got if some luck. We get to March. Neither one of these two teams make the NCAA TV. Can get it done at all three levels. And the crazy thing is he only averaged like seven or eight points per game wow. a season ago, jumping up to 24 points per game because of the transfers in Lance Jones and Marcus Dumas. <laughs> Quite the leap. And you'll get to see him next on CBS Sports Network. Okay, 8.02 to go, partner. What's this game going to come down to? Who executes in the half court? Because this game is going to slow down at some point. At least I believe so. Smith is off. That went over the basket back to UNCW. They have not led since it was 22-21 with 8.05 left in the first half. And Smith is 2 of 8 from the three-point line. But if you're Wilmington, you have to continue to cover him hard because he's a guy that has a short-term memory that can make big shots down the stretch. UNCW has shot at 67% from the field in this second half. Phillips gliding. Seahawks lead. Once again, Phillips does a great job using the escape dribble. Berjevich hard hedges on the ball screen. Little quick escape dribble opens up the lane for him to get downhill. Berzovich slicing through two Seahawks and a foul. And if you're Harvey there, you have to close the gap. As we see the replay here, you've got to close that gap so that he stays, Berzovich stays contained. But Berzovich was able to get through that gap before Harvey came, and then it caused the blocking foul. A season-high 23 for Berzovic. He is a Division II transfer. Southeastern Oklahoma State. Played his prep hoops in Croatia, under-recruited, under the radar. But Pat Kelsey goes and finds those under-the-radar gems. And he's put them on the national stage. 100%. You can find talented players anywhere, especially with the landscape of college basketball. 
with the transfer portal, a lot of guys in recruiting slipped through the cracks. Whereas in the past, they would have been recruited by high major opponents. And like when I was playing, there weren't a lot of 6'10 skilled centers at the mid-major level. That is not the case today. Look at Dalton Bolin and Pat Robinson, D2 guys on last year's tournament team. Here's Phillips. Phillips heaves. He's off, and Berzovic with his eighth rebound. And Phillips knew it. He was open on that play because, once again, they got to stay home on Jenkins on that Spain pick-and-roll action. And a kickball call. Ten ties, nine lead changes. A rematch of the CAA title game last year that Pat Kelsey and the Cougars won. They won all three meetings last year. Bolden, Bursovic with a season high performance. Got that one altered by Harvey. There's eight on the shot clock. Here's the game. Charleston is going to play through Bursovic, whether it's on the perimeter, whether it's on the low block. And the Seahawks are going to send that double team, even sometimes a triple team. Other guys have to be ready to shoot on the perimeter. Policelli. In and out. White. Got the basketball. Might have got away with the walk there. Tracerian White. He's turned it on in this second half with 10. Shot clock at 10 for Phillips, the fifth year senior. He's ready for this moment. Shaquem Phillips. McGriff couldn't get it. And here come the Cougars. Policelli left open. Offensive rebound only grab momentarily. That went behind the basket. And it made contact, so it is Charleston basketball. And Charleston is shooting 3 of 14 in the second half. They've gotten the looks that they've wanted. Just haven't been able to knock them down. And I think you got to give the Seahawks a ton of credit on the defensive end of staying true to their principles. On the floor for the Cougars, Crawford, Butler, Berzovich, Rogers, and Burnham. For the Seahawks, it's Jenkins, Phillips, White, McGriff, all starters, and then Hodge, the X Factor off the bench. Rogers. Tip back for Bursovic. He has 27. And even though Rodgers missed that bucket, because he was able to get downhill, McGriff had to come over and help, and that opened up the tip back for Bursovic. Dump downstairs. Off the fake. Bucket good for McGriff. Just his second basket of the game. That was a tough catch by McGriff. Caught it. Two guys around him. Took his time. Left-hand dribble and got to a strong right shoulder. Timeout. Pat Kelsey, he has two left. Both teams have two left. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Folks, we're in for drama in Wilmington. Here, Kobe Rogers getting downhill. Birds a bit stealing off his defender. And how about this catch by McGriff? Shot fake, one dribble. Great fundamental bas basketball to get the finish. John Fanta, Trey Demps with you from Wilmington, North Carolina. Rivalry battle. That one is off for Rodgers. Another offensive rebound, though, for the Cougars. Crawford, the freshman, has four threes tonight. Shot clock at eight. Burnham got his man in the air and worked the foul. Great take there by Burnham. Taking his time, the shot clock was going against him. Got into the middle of the paint. Was able to get the shot fake as we see here again. He's taking his time, there's one little dig. But if you don't send a double team, that is a hard matchup for the sophomore Noah Ross. Off on his first attempt. As C.J. Fulton checks back in for Rodgers, 
4.43 to go now. What are you zoning in on in the final stretch of this ball game? Well, I think this is where your stars need to shine their brightest. And I think it's a little bit of a concern if you're Charleston with Burnham. Only two points, one of five from the field. Hasn't played well on the road all season, but he's got to come up clutch here. Shaquem Phillips. Phillips with a spin and a foul going up to K.O. Siddle. Asks for a goal 10. And they will count it and now go to the monitor to review that call. I think this is something that a lot more guards can use, especially for bigger size guards. Ooh. Phillips, ooh. You see it again here. I don't know, that ball looked like it might have been on the way up. Green. Well, the officials have a debate. At the moment, we have a two-point game. Remember, it's been from the low block. The Seahawks have had no answer for the big fella. And when he's playing aggressive and getting downhill and getting over that right shoulder, he's unstoppable to guard. Ante Berzovic with a season high 27 points and nine rebounds and how efficient he's been in 11 of 17. Meanwhile here folks that goaltending call the officials make that call to be able to go to the monitor and review it and make the final determination. You were right Trey Demps the ball was still going up on that Phillips shot so it's just two shots for the fifth year senior. And I think that shot was going in by Phillips. So uh, that was a great play there by the freshman getting up there and getting the block. Scott, who remains in with four fouls. John Fanta and Trey Demps with you. These two teams fighting for that second slot in the CAA standings with Drexel in first at 7-0. It's a two-point Seahawks lead, and here they come again at a sold-out Trask Coliseum. Eleven ties, twelve lead changes, alley-oop, and a foul. Scott will go to the line. You see it again here, Fulton with a little two-man game with Scott. It's a great lob pass where only Scott can get it up top. They got him on the arm, let's see if the big fella can knock down two free throws. Perhaps not the worst foul. He's 10 for 19 on the year from the free throw line. 10 of 19. He's got a good looking shot though. I mean, the mechanics are good. It's fluid. Here comes Kobe Rogers. That's something to watch. Who's going to be the go to guy down the stretch here? Berzovic is coming back in, but on the perimeter, who's going to initiate the offense if the ball can't get into the paint? Off on both, and he stays in as Berzovic was waiting to check in for him. The largest Charleston, rather the largest UNCW ever led this game was by three at 12 to nine. They've been trailing the majority of the way. Switch here. Phillips with Scott on him. Scott has four fouls. Phillips, fader. And a foul on the Cougars. And they're already in the penalty. And that's the disadvantage of switching. Is that down low, all of a sudden, a guard is on McGriff. McGriff doing a good job of crashing the glass. And you see here, Rodgers is on him down there. Look at McGriff crack in right there, be able to get advantage. And that's what prompted the foul on the rebound. Seahawks are in the double bonus. And so the Seahawks are in the double bonus. Now the question is, who's the free throw that's shooter? That's what I was just thinking. I kind of <laughs> made a face over here. To Jenkins, a little veteran move walking on over there. <laughs> Of course you want your best shooter at the line. But the contact on the foul 
at least at our first glance, yeah, it looked like McGriff, McGriff was the one who got fouled. Or my analysis would have made no point. No, no <laughs> sense at all. All right, here we go. <laughs> Look at, hold on. Jenkins is running towards half court. That is comical. <laughs> It's a really nice veteran attempt <laughs> by KJ Jenkins to insert himself to the free throw line. You'll do anything to win a rivalry game. Yeah, Casper must have got him. But Kamari McGriff is the free throw shooter. Where he is a respectable 73% on the year. But to my point again, I mean, a guy with that kind of stroke, with that kind of size, Ten years ago, when I'm playing college basketball, is at a Power 5 school. But that just what makes this sport so great, is that you can have a guy like that play at this level. Charleston won for their last ten from the field. Where do you go? You've got to go to the big fella right here. See a little bit of an Iverson cut. Get the ball to your best player's hands. They do give it to him. He's got 27. Fulton! It spins in and out, but we've got bodies to the deck and a whistle. The question is, who's the foul line? See it again here. You go under the screen on Fulton. Rims in and out. Where's the foul? Seems like it happens maybe underneath the basket on the on the ground. Not quite sure. We've got both coaches chatting with the officials. This is an intense. White with the foul. It's a double foul. I do like that call. Both Seahawks guys are wrestling. Basketball. If you're going to call it, call it fair. Where both guys are initiating contact and getting tangled up. I love that call from the referee. So because it's a double foul, it is UNCW basketball as it goes to a jump ball. The arrow was with the Seahawks. So now that arrow's with Charleston. Both teams with two timeouts. The Cougars in the single bonus. The Seahawks in the double bonus as we hit three minutes to go. Phillips with eight. Shaquem Phillips pulls. Short. McGriff was over the back. Free throws for the Cougars. Phillips getting to his bag a little bit. The mid-range shot. Good job there by Rogers. Boxing out, even though he's undersized. Playing good fundamental basketball on the glass and drawing the foul. So, it's the fourth foul on the grip. And now Colby Rogers, a strong free throw shooter at 82% on the year. Can't hit the front end. Bercevich got the rebound. Crawford, long. Another battle for it. Deflected. And it stays with the Cougars. Or did... That not to deflect off them, it did. The officials have changed the call. And we're not under the two-minute mark, so I don't believe this is reviewable. It is not. Yep. Got it right. They changed it quickly. Off of Butler's leg. Then you got to get the ball to White somehow. We've been at a standstill here. Neither team has made a field goal in the last three minutes. Oh, just a quick isolation. They're trying to get it to White. Now they do. Trezarian White lost it. And a foul. A it's foul called with three on the shot clock. If I post the deal right now, I want to get White the ball in between the elbows. There's so much help side as we see it again. You see all the hands and help side that can come when he catches that ball. 
in that mid-block area. But fortunately there, I was able to get the foul. White 70% from the line on the year now. Four of five today. So here's the other thing, Trey, is you see Harvey check back in for McGriff, who has the four fouls. So a little defense for offense, vice versa for Takeo Siddle. Charleston hasn't scored in three and a half minutes. They get the rebound here. A lot of contact, no call. And they continue to play through the perimeter. I think you've got to get a post-up touch. They tried again. Deflected. Back to the Seahawks. It went off the hands of Butler, say the officials, but now they can go to the monitor and look at it. It's UNCW ball. They've got a four-point lead. I think both offenses right now are a little bit disoriented. And... The reason that is is because the pace of this game for 35 minutes has been up and down. Now you have to find the rhythm within the half court to try to execute and get a high percentage shot. Jenkins, Phillips, Hodge, White, and Harvey for the Seahawks. Smith, Butler, Bursovich, Rogers, and Fulton for the Cougars. Phillips on the move with 10. Phillips kicks. Ross is off. Berzovic has 27. He got stripped. Phillips took it from him and wisely pulls it out because the clock's his friend. Great play there. Understanding that Berzovic is going to get downhill and attack. Just takes his ball from him. That's gritty basketball. Two timeouts apiece, both teams in the double bonus. The Arrows with the Cougars. Eight on the shot clock for Phillips as we hit the final minute. Shaquem Phillips, the fifth-year senior. This is his time! Big-time play from Phillips. Getting it to the bag. One-on-one, mano-a-mano basketball. And knocking down the top midi. 12-1 this season when they score at least 69 points. They have hit that mark, but now Charleston down six. What do you have to do? I think once again, you got to try to either get downhill or get the ball to Burbage somehow. They tried to get it to Smith. That was defended. Berzovic has to heave. An air ball. It's to the Seahawks. Beg your pardon. Yes, it is. To the Seahawks. That possession, Charleston tried to run a little bit of a double stagger on the weak side as the ball was being brought up. The Seahawks completely blew that play up. And that kind of allowed the disoriented offensive possession, which ended in an air ball. And Pat Kelsey asked for a review, and he gets it. The Southern Illinois Northern Iowa game is underway and now available streaming free on the CBS Sports app. Consider getting one good hard track before fouling to see if you can force a turnover. If the Seahawks have any issues inbounding it, they do have a timeout. Charleston with two, both teams in the double bonus. A jump ball would give the Cougars the ball back. And a foul. Timeout. A timeout called at the last moment. So they will use that last timeout. We had simultaneous whistles, and the official on the far side is the one who got the... They're going to go to a different set where they got three, four guys towards the right sideline here. We've got Jenkins, Newby, Phillips, and Hodge lined up in a quartet, a stack. White, the inbounder. And the official whistles things here. We've got an offensive foul. An offensive foul is called on Phillips. 
and could that have gone any better for Charleston? They will get the ball. Now all of a sudden you got a two possession game and you have two possessions because there's 35 seconds on the clock. So a push off by Phillips. And now Charleston with a pulse down by six, 35.1, plenty of time. We'll see it again here. Ooh. I don't know, I think Butler might have sold that one a little bit, but nonetheless, it's a veteran play because this winning time, any time, any advantage that you can have to get yourself another opportunity to have more life in this game, you're gonna take. You wanna get a basket to extend the game nonetheless. And in this second half, Charleston has only shot three for 17 from three. It's an eight nothing UNCW run over five minutes. Charleston has not scored in five minutes and three seconds. Smith will be the inbounder, joined by Butler, Berzovich, Rogers, and Folden. They get it to Folden. He's short. Rogers fights for it. It's to the Seahawks. Very interesting that they ran that set for Fulton to get open from three. He is a 36% field three-point shooter, so did have a look there as we see the replay, but just wasn't able to knock it down. And they got it right. White, the inbounder, no timeouts for the Seahawks. You've got a tie-up or a foul, and it is a foul. They were fighting to get that jump ball. But instead, it's Rogers with the foul. And in the double bonus, Shaquem Phillips will head to the line. He's 16 for 17 from the line in his last four games. And Trey Demps, what a performance that we've seen from the point guard tonight. Yeah, doesn't have great numbers as far as shooting, but has just led his group in this second half and really taking control of the game. Talk about that key steal on Berzovich in a crucial moment. And I mean, the ball has been in his hands. Coach Siddle has really trusted him to be able to create and make plays. And he's made a lot of right decisions. Makes them both 18 for 19 over the last four games. Now up by eight, Folden. Charleston with one timeout. Folden, Smith from the logo is off. Fight for the rebound. Phillips has it. And he's fouled. And now they can taste it at Trask. How about this second half performance? Wilmington willing, gunning this victory out. Butler fouls out. Look at Coach Sadell. Boom! The excitement, the energy, the passion. Can't think of a better leader of this program. It's a guy who knows how to get it done. It's a well-coached game and a well-played game for the Seahawks. He's a Kevin Keats and Chris Holtman disciple. And a guy who beat Kentucky as a player. Now as a coach, he led this program to a win over Kentucky earlier this season. He accounted for the second most wins that this program seen in a three-year run to start a coaching tenure in program history. He has done a remarkable job here and has a team that, as John Rothstein said earlier this week, could do serious damage in March. The UNCW Seahawks get redemption! Big-time performance for the Seahawks. How about holding Charleston as we see a court storm? Three of 19 from three. Amazing atmosphere.